Psalms uh, 73, book of Psalms 73. I'm just going to read a couple verses, give you a little thought from these verses. The Bible says, verse number one, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, you have been good to us. We thank you, Lord, that uh, when we meditate upon the things of God, and Lord, we muse the Scriptures, and God, we think about how good you've been in our lives. We can't help but want to worship you and bless you and praise you. God, we thank you for the good testimonies. And Lord, we thank you for being a good God. Lord, I pray now that you'd bless those that are working with the children on the other side. And God, I pray for those precious children, Lord, that they'd hide the Word of God deep in their hearts that they might not sin against Thee. And God, I pray for those that have reached the age of accountability and yet have not trusted in Christ, uh, that, Lord, You'd prick their tender little hearts and we'd see them saved before it's everlasting too late. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are working with the teens, that, God, You'd help those young people, uh, what they're faced with in this wicked world that we live in. And God... I pray you'd insulate their minds and hearts with the Scriptures. Uh, God, I too pray, if any has not been born again, God, we'd see them saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, Lord, much has been said already about your coming. Lord, we know that, uh, uh, Lord, it's high time we awake, for our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Uh, God, we know we're right on the brink of your coming. God, I pray that you'd prepare our hearts and our minds. Uh, help us to shine his lights. Uh, Bless, God, that we might see many saved uh, before it's eternally too late. Uh, bless now in this service. Uh, help your people. We pray if there's anyone in the sanctuary not born again. God, they wouldn't leave that way. They'd get that matter settled uh, 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 and settled tonight. Uh, and I pray that you'd edify and encourage your people. Uh, uh, God, give them something that will strengthen them in the days to come. Uh, and God, do a work in our hearts. Uh, Lord, thank you for the good news from Brother Bobby. Uh, Lord, thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Uh, God, I pray you continue to bless their revival. And Brother Amos's revival and the other meetings coming up. Uh, God, stir and God, do work. Uh, send great revival in these last days. Uh, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice, uh, first of all, uh, 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 that we see in this psalm, I want you to notice... Uh, the truth that is conveyed. Uh, uh, the Bible says, Truly, uh, or of a truth, uh, God is good to Israel. Uh, and can I say, even when Israel uh, was serving false gods and turned their back on God, uh, when Israel was not living up to what Israel should have lived uh, up to, uh, God was good to Israel. Uh, and can I say, uh, even though America's not what America should be, uh, God is still good to America. God is blessing America uh, because of those forefathers that come and set this country up uh, on the principles and oracles of the Word of God uh, and because of all the Bibles that have been printed uh, uh, because all the missionaries have been sent uh, uh, because all the churches have been established in this country uh, God's still good to America we ought to bless His holy name uh, I want you to notice not only the truth in these verses uh, I want you to notice the, uh, the temperate look what it says truly God is good to Israel even to such as are of a clean heart. Um, I don't know that there's anybody here that is Jewish. The Jews are still God's chosen people. But can I say, if you've got a clean heart, if your heart's been washed in the blood of Christ, God's good to you too. Huh? We ought to bless him. Uh, 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 what a, a, a thought uh, uh, that you don't have to be of the nation of Israel uh, uh, if you know the Lord. Uh, He's good to you. Uh, we see not only the truth and the temperate, uh, but notice the psalmist, Asaph, gives us some insight to some testing that he went through. Look at verse number 2. He says, but as for me, he's saying God's good to Israel. God's good to everybody of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. 
Asa said, God's good to Israel. God's been good to those of a clean heart. He said, but I'm going to be honest with you. As for me myself, I was almost gone. I almost slipped away from the goodness of God. With God's help, I want to preach for just a few minutes on that thought, almost gone. Almost gone. If you're honest tonight, you'll say God's been good to you. He allowed you to get up this morning. He gave you strength in your body. He's been good in your health. He's been good to give you enough money to be able to afford gasoline. That's a blessing right there. Uh, I saw a picture of a, a fella down on one knee, and you'd think he's opening up a box to show a ring to a young lady. Uh, no, he's handing her a gas can, and she was all excited. What a blessing, huh? God's been good to you. And God's allowed you to be in church today. God's allowed you to hear the good songs of Zion. Allowed you to hear good testimonies. Allowed you to hear preaching. Uh, uh, God's just been good to you today. But if you're not careful, before the sun comes up tomorrow, you could be almost gone. I got thinking about that word almost. The word almost means nearly. It means just about. It means nigh. As a matter of fact, he even said uh, his steps had well nigh slipped. It means all but. And can I say, you can be in the church house, but your heart can be almost gone from the presence and goodness of God. Uh, so with that in mind, I got to thinking of what causes some to go after the world. If you're honest tonight, you know people that used to come to church. You know people that used to be preachers or used to be teachers or used to be deacons, uh, and tonight they're not in church. You know folks that used to be faithful and they're not faithful. You know folks that uh, uh, maybe used to attend a different church or something. You know folks that used to be a solid Christian but tonight they're not in the house of God. What causes folks to go after the world? I find three things in this chapter that explains what causes folks to go after the world. Can I say first of all they look at the wicked. Look at verse number 3. He said, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Can I say there are folks that are gone tonight, uh, and you may be almost gone tonight because uh, you got your eyes off of Jesus uh, and you got to looking around at the wicked. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the devil's got a big magnifying glass and he'll put it over your eyes uh, and he'll let you see folks who are prospering in this world, uh, uh, folks who live wicked, uh, uh, folks who don't uh, uh, seek after God, uh, but it seems like they got all the toys. Uh, they live in the nicest houses. Uh, it seems like everything they touch turns to gold. Uh, they never get sick. Uh, their kids never get sick. Uh, uh, their kids show up and they're the starters on the ball team. Uh, and yours works themselves to death and never makes it. Uh, uh, it seems like uh, uh, no matter what, uh, uh, the wicked fare well. Uh, they prosper. Uh, and every day your life's a struggle. Uh, uh, you're trying to do everything you can to make ends meet. Uh, and the devil point out if you just turn from God... Uh, and head the direction of that crowd, you'll prosper too. Uh, you better be careful where you set your eyes at. Mm. Can I say, when Abraham and Lot's herdsmen were having a, a, a feud, Abraham said, this isn't working. We knew it wouldn't work <coughs> because Abraham didn't obey God. God told Abraham to get up and leave his kinsmen. Well, he did, but he took a lot with him. Hmm? Can I say partial obedience is still disobedience? Well, they got out there and they had problems. Abraham tells Lot, you choose which way you want to go, I'll go the other direction. And Lot gets to looking around. And he looks down in the, in the valley down there. and He says, boy, look at them two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. That looks like a great place to raise a family. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. He got in trouble when he got to looking. Uh, I think about that prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. 
uh, uh, he goes to his father and he bids for his inheritance. And if you know anything about Jewish uh, uh, law, uh, uh, the younger son had no right to an inheritance. Uh, uh, the elder son, the firstborn, got all the inheritance. Uh, but the father was good to him, uh, gave a portion of goods to him. Uh, hey, uh, what many days? Uh, and he headed out for a far country. Can I say something? Uh, he'd already set his sights on the lights of that city. Uh, he'd already been looking in that direction. Uh, and he said, there's something something out there for me uh, better be careful where you look Samson and he brought up Samson uh, uh, Samson's parents uh, 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 and by the way uh, that's one of the miracles in the Bible uh, uh, the wife of Manoah Samson's father could not have a child and God blessed her womb they tried to raise him, tried to tell him. He started looking for a wife uh, and they said uh, uh, how about the daughters of Israel? No, he got to looking at them Philistine women Hmm? Uh, I'm just trying to tell you, you better watch where you look. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Why are some gone tonight? Why are some almost gone tonight? And they've been looking at the wicked. When you get to looking at the wicked, it won't be long, you'll be longing for what the wicked has. Can I say this? There's some almost gone tonight. They've went after the world, some have gone after the world because they long for the wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Look, in the Scriptures let us know that mm, there are ways of the wicked. Mm, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. It's destruction. And folks get to looking at the wicked, then they get to longing for the wicked's ways. Notice they are long for the wicked's prosperity. Look again in verse number 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Hmm. If you're honest tonight, you wouldn't mind having a, a few rolls of $20 gold pieces in your pocket. And gold's what, $1,300, $1,400 an ounce? Uh, I'll never forget, my dad told me two things. But I was stupid. I didn't listen to Dad. He said, buy, buy land because they aren't making any more of it. And buy all the gold you can get your hands on. Well, I got two little pieces on my fingers. That's about it. <laughs> uh, my Dad told me when I was a baby, he had an opportunity to buy $20 gold pieces for face value, $20 a piece. But he's a young father, young husband, Going to night school, working a job, babies are expensive, and he didn't buy gold. He said, son, big mistake, big mistake. You could went hungry for a few days. I should have bought some gold. Huh? <laughs> but see, we get to looking around the world, and what is prosperous in this world, if you're not careful, you'll start longing for it. I got news for you. When the trumpet blows, all the gold you got stays here. When you go to the grave, everything you've amassed stays here. You've heard this. You've never seen a, a, a hearse pulling a U-Haul going to the graveside. It, it just doesn't happen. You know what I find in working in the funeral business a little bit? Uh, you know what I find? Uh, whatever you amass, your family fights over after you're gone. Hmm? You wouldn't believe how many funerals that I've worked where there's friction in the family over the junk mom and dad left behind. Hmm? Listen, they sit, start longing for the prosperity of the wicked. Not only that, they start longing um, for, the pros uh, for the wicked's not being plagued. Look at verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Mm -mm. You ever notice some Christian people seem like they struggle all their life? And yet you can look around, there's some wicked people and seem like nothing ever, ever bothers them or attaches itself to them I don't know about you I've known people like that seems like they're always a picture of health always have everything they need seem like some, some Christian people that it's a constant struggle in their life and you think boy it'd be alright if I didn't have any valleys any storms any tragedy it'd be alright if, if I wasn't plagued like other people are plagued they start longing for the wicked's ways their prosperity, they're not being plagued. They start longing for the wicked's pride. 
Look at verse 6. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a change. Violence covereth them as a garment. They start longing for that haughty spirit of the wicked. Hmm? You know, the just are to live by faith, but the just are to be meek. Do you know why action movies are so popular? Because they always got a character that takes on the establishment. Not real meek at all. Real brash. And a lot of people want to identify with, boy, I'd like to be that person. I'd like to have a, a 9 millimeter that I can shoot 800 people and never reload. Huh? You ever watch? You know, I used to watch westerns and I'd count. Because they only held six. You know? Lone Rangers must have, must have had big cylinders that held a lot more than that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now you don't know if they've got 9, 10, 15 in the clip or whatever, but they never have to reload. You know? The only one I ever seen reload was Jack Bauer. You know? But that's an old other thing. Uh, listen, I want to tell you about 10 years ago, I wouldn't mind being a Jack Bauer. Uh, some of you looking at me, you have no idea who Jack Bauer is. Thad, Jack Bauer, right? Hmm? Jack Bauer lived by one rule. Jack Bauer's rules. Huh? Not too bad. Anyway, what I'm saying is, if you're not careful, you'll start getting that same haughty spirit. You won't want to follow the rules. You'll want to be the top dog. You want everybody coming to you for advice and coming to you for help. You want everybody catering to you. You get filled up with pride. I remind you, the Bible says that pride and a haughty spirit go before a fall. You better be real careful. But yet, some have went that way. I'm not going to listen to what the preacher says. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care about this. I'm going to live my life. And they're gone. They long for the wicked's pride. They're gone, or they're almost gone. What causes some to go after the world? They long for the wicked's ways. They long for the wicked's pleasures. Look at verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Can I say there's pleasure in sin for a season, and the world has a lot of pleasures to offer. And can I say not all the pleasures the world offers is wicked till you make it your God. Till you put it between you and God. Listen, I'm big sports nut, not like I used to be, just because money's ruined the game. They won't let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame because he gambled, but yet now gambling's legal even in baseball. Bunch of hypocrites. It's always follow the money. It amazes me Pete Rose can't be in the Hall of Fame for gambling, but Mickey Mantle is, and he got caught gambling. Willie Mays got caught gambling. He's in the Hall of Fame. And by the way, they say Ty Cobb killed a man. I don't know if he did or not, but he's in the Hall of Fame. Huh? They said Pete Rose just admit it and apologize. We'll let you in. He did admit it, and then they, made, they treat him worse. Huh? Isn't that a beauty of the church? You can stand up and say you sinned against God, and you're sorry, and apologize to the church. Everybody love on you. It's not that way in the world. Hmm. What can I say? Uh, I, there, there are things about sports and the competition and everything. I used to love March Madness. I used to watch probably, you know, 50 games during March Madness. I used to love the tournament and love uh, uh, seeing them young men compete for the prize. But again, they've, they've ruined it. And I know all you kitty cat fans love them, but I'm here to tell you, UK's ruined basketball. Play one year and you're done. Huh? It's ruined it. I don't even know members of the teams anymore. I used to love sports. There's nothing wrong with sports until sports becomes your God. And you start missing church because of sports. I know a fellow, he's in heaven. At least I hope he is. He's in heaven tonight. And boy, if UK played on Wednesday, he wouldn't be at church. Because mm. that was his God. But the world has pleasures. There's nothing wrong with certain things in this world and having things in this world till the things have you. And you start looking to the wicked and you'll get gone. You start longing for the wicked's things. You'll get gone. And I thought about this. Others 
have gone after the world or are almost gone because they've listened to the wicked. Look at verse number 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither and waters uh, of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. They listen to the poisons of the wicked. I know people that were raised in church, that heard the gospel, that heard the truth of the scriptures, that know the doctrines of the Bible, but they got out, got to listening to the world, the world's philosophies, uh, and tonight they deny the very God that bought them. Because they started listening. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But doubt comes by listening to the enemy. Why are so many gone? They've looked at the wicked, they've longed for the wicked's ways, and they've listened to the wicked. There's some almost gone. Because they have itching ears and they listen. Oh, you don't have to listen to your parents and go to church three times a week. Once a week's fine. Every now and then's fine. You don't have to go to revival every night. Well, I don't know about you, but my flesh is rotten and I need all the church I can get. You know what preaching does? Preaching irons out the wrinkles of your life. Preaching to keep you straight. And the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, we don't need less preaching. We need more preaching. And why do you think... A lot of churches are going liberal and doing away with the pulpit and doing away with preaching and doing away with the, uh, the old standards of the things of God because they've listened to the wicked. But I've got good news. In this same chapter, I find what keeps people from going to the world. What keeps people from ending up in Sodom or in a far country or in the lap of Delilah? What's well, right here in this chapter? Can I say, what keeps people from getting gone or ending up in the world is a heavenly understanding. Look at verse 17. He's talking about all these things of the wicked. But it changes in verse 17. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. He said, I know what happens to the end of the wicked. When I went to church, I heard the truth. And I found out what happens to that crowd. What happens? Look at verse 18. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casteth them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. Uh, as a dream when one waketh uh, uh, so, O Lord, thou, when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. God said... They'll end up in a slippery slope. They'll end up in destruction. And when God uh, shows up, He'll despise their very image. He said, when I went to church, I found that out. So that heavenly understanding will keep me in the things of God. I don't want to go the way of the wicked. I see their end. Mm -hmm. We find not only a heavenly understanding keeps people from going after the world, a holy unction keeps people from going after the world. Look at verse 21. Thus my heart was grieved. And I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Uh, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. That uh, holy unction will keep you from going after the world. And if you want to be honest, everybody at some point in time, you've thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice? Then all of a sudden, something stirs up on the inside and says, no, you need to stay right where you're at. It's that holy unction. Uh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Uh, thank God for the Holy Ghost that only lets you go so far. Uh, he starts drawing you back. What a blessing uh, to have Him living within us. Uh, you know why some end up out there in the world? They didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. Hmm? 
By the way, pigs eat slop. Children eat from the father's table. Hmm? You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. You'll get that by the time you get home. Huh? What well, keeps people from going after the world? A heavenly understanding. Holy unction. But also a humble uprightness. Look at verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. A humble uprightness. Realizing without God we're nothing. Realizing He's all that we really have. Realizing what we are without Him. My dear friends, that'll keep you from going after the world. Huh? Folks on their knees don't stray. Folks with a humble heart don't stray. It's those folks with their nose turned up in the, in the air. That's the crowd that goes astray. Hmm? My Aunt Lynn's here. Her daddy used to say this. Some people, their nose be turned up so high they drown in rainstorm. Remember that? You say that, Aunt Lynn. Huh? I don't want to be that way. And when you've got a humble heart and a humble uprightness, you are what you are by the grace of God. You understand that. My dear friends, you won't go after the world. And then I thought about this. What keeps people from going after the world? A hunger unfulfilled. Look at verse 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And I say, the closer you get to Him, the more you desire Him. And that hunger unfulfilled, you see, until we see Him face to face, we'll have that hunger, we'll have that desire. It's unfulfilled until one day we'll see Him as He is. And all of our dreams and desires will come to fruition. That hunger unfulfilled will keep you from going after the world. Uh, well, I just long to see Him. I long to see Him move in the services. I long to see Him touch hearts and change lives. That hunger unfulfilled keeps me coming back. Every time I walk through those doors, I expect God to do something. I do. I just come looking for Him to do something. Don't know what He's going to do. I just want to be around when He does it. But so many times, the crowd that leaves, it's because they have no expectation of God when they come. Mm. Boy, I just, I hate having to hear about what He did. I want to be where He does it. Hmm? Hmm? Huh? I guarantee you, you miss church and you'll come in folks say boy you should have been here you wouldn't believe what God did hmm? that is the worst thing you can ever do to people you know that so I do it every time they haven't been here boy you should have been here Lord have mercy did God blow through here today huh? put a little mayonnaise on top of it you know what I'm saying huh? but oh that hunger unf unfulfilled the day may be the day you know what keeps a lot of folks coming back they know today could be the day he's coming yeah. Today could be the day revival breaks out. Today could be the day somebody gets born again. Today could be the day the, a prodigal comes home. Wasn't that wonderful news about Brother Bobby's daughter? You know why? Because it was today. Today was the day. Hmm? What a blessing. He called me. He was beside himself. He called me about quarter after five. It probably I told Brother Bob it probably took him that long to come down. And he called me. And he's telling me. And he's all excited. And I said, Brother Bobby. Just one more to go. He said, that's right, preacher, one more to go. One more to go. Huh? You see, I was there many years ago when he was broken over his girls. But God gave him a promise out of Isaiah. He said, I don't know when, preacher, but I'm going to see my daughters get right with God because God gave me a promise. Hmm? See, that hunger unfulfilled. He's got a promise. Part of it came to pass today. Huh? But he's looking for the rest of it to come to pass. Uh, let me ask you, what are you hungering for? Hmm? What are you longing for? What do you desire? Jesus asked the crowd that came out, I said, what did you come out to see? Talking about John the Baptist. 
He said, did you come see a prophet? A reed shaking in the wind? What did you come out to see? Hmm? What did you come out to see? Hmm? Boy, I long to see God just show up and do something in people's hearts. Because you know why? The world can't do that. The world can't manufacture that. The world can't uh, duplicate that. They try in all kinds of things. But everything the world has to offer leaves you empty. Hmm? There'll be, what, 65 teams going to March Madness? 64 fan bases will leave empty. The one that wins it will be excited for about three days. Then they'll have to go back to work. They'll have to face $5 a gallon gas. They'll have to do all this, and it'll be gone. Huh? Some rock and roll singer sang a song one time, The Thrill is Gone. But can I say, Christians never get over the thrill of Mount Calvary. We never get over the thrill of God's touch. We never get over the thrill of God loves us and that God wants to meet with us. We never get over that. So therefore, when you know the truth, the things of the world grow strangely dim. But the things of heaven get brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, God help us be like a bunch of bugs headed toward a bug's light. You know one of them bug zappers? For God. Just get closer and closer to the light. Hmm? It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing when you get consumed by the light of God. God help us to not get almost gone. There's some folks I fear are almost gone. If you're honest, there have been times in your life you was almost gone. Hmm. But thanks be unto God, you're still here. Hmm. Uh, thanks be unto God, you still got a little flicker down in your soul for the things of God. The good news about a little flicker, it don't take much for it to turn into a blaze. And that's what I'm looking for, God to consume us with a fire from heaven. I wonder, are you almost gone tonight? The Bible says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Huh? Almost gone still means you're here. Why don't you say, Lord, help me? I like when Jesus asks them, the fellows, if they believe, He says, Yeah, but help thou mine unbelief. God, thank you for what you've done in my life. Help those areas of my life that I need help in. That's a good prayer to pray. Because if you ask him for help, he'll help you. I wonder tonight. We're going to say, Lord, thank you for all you've done. But help me in those areas I need improvement on. Because i got news for you. He's knocked the rough edges off of all of us, but there might still be some edges that need, need knocked off of us. Might need some polishing up. Might need some wedding of our appetite I know one thing if you ask him to reveal where you are he'll show you and he'll show you what you need and I promise you it's always more of him I wonder tonight is the world strangely dim or is the world looking brighter and brighter I don't know how you can look around this world and see anything you desire I'm here to tell you if you get to looking real closely just over the horizon you can start to see the lights of that city New Jerusalem. Uh, you get to looking toward the heavenlies, the eastern sky. You can see it's just about ready to open up for the church to head out of here. Uh, keep your eyes on heaven. Keep listening to the things of God. Keep longing for the things of God. And you'll find the goodness of God will be revealed to your heart as well. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. I'm already praying. Maybe you need to come pray. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord for His goodness. Maybe you need to come and ask Him for help. Maybe tonight somebody's been a real blessing to your life and you just need to go and say, you know what, you've been a blessing. I want to thank you. You don't know. They might be, they might be hurting tonight, but if the Lord lays it on your heart to go and thank them or put your arms around, it might be the very thing they need to keep them from becoming almost gone. I don't know. I know this. If the Lord speaks to your heart, you mind Him, and it'll be right. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these that have already come. 
Lord, if we're honest, there's always there's been times in all of our lives where we've almost thrown in the towel, we've almost got gone, we've had our eyes in the wrong direction. But God, thank you for the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, you don't throw us away. God, thank you for the things of God that draw us back into the fellowship of God. Now, Lord, you know the hearts of your people tonight. Maybe some just need to come and thank you. Some might need to come tell you they love you. Some might need to go to somebody and just tell them they appreciate them. I don't know, Lord. This is your invitation. We just ask you to speak to hearts and you direct. And God, you'd be glorified in what's done. Bless now. We'll thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.